This is my old Linux computer and this is my new Linux computer. Let's assemble it. This computer is now 5 years old and it was already on the lower end when I bought it. It has Intel Core i3 inside, built-in graphics, 8GB of memory and as you can see mini ITX motherboard. It also has very nice breathable case as you can see here. And here is the foot of this case. So I really like this computer and I think I would not upgrade because it still works pretty well and it is reasonably fast. But when I use it for video editing sometimes I feel like I need little more performance. So that's why I decided to upgrade. Let's start assembling this computer and I will show you what I bought as I assemble it. Let's get started. And we will start with the case. This is Fractal Design Define C case. This is how it looks from the outside. It has two USB ports on the top, headphone jack, microphone input, reset button and the power button. Now let's open it. This is how it looks inside. It has two coolers and it can also be breathable from top, down and the front side and of course the back side. This will be Intel based computer with a motherboard Gigabyte Z380. This is how it looks and we will start with installing the processor. And here I will use Intel Core i7-9700K. Let's install it. Here is the processor. And to install it we need to open this socket. And align the processor based on these two things and this corner. As you can see it sits very well, so now we just need to remove this plastic cover and, and install the processor. So the processor is installed. Before we install the cooler on top of our processor, it is better to install RAM memory, because cooler may cover these slots for the RAM, so in this particular case I will use this 2x16GB RAM memory. Let's install it. This is how it looks inside. This is also low profile memory, so I just wanted to make sure that the cooler will not cover the top of these memory sticks. So we need to open RAM slot and install it until this to things close. And we do the same for the second one. It is also important to, if you have several RAM sticks, it's important to install them into two different cover slots to make sure they work. Okay, RAM is installed. Actually, it is also good to install M2 SSD at this stage because it will be installed here which again overlaps with our cooler. So let's install it too. So this is the memory and it's installed in this small M2 slot. And you also need to fix it with this little screw here. Now it's time to install the cooler and in this particular case I will use this Noctua NH-U12A cooler which is 120mm in diameter. It has all the necessary tools inside and this is how the cooler looks. It's a quite big cooler and I decided to go with it because my processor is capable for overclocking so I may overclock it in the future and I will also use built-in graphics. 
so the processor may get a little hot and it is better to keep it cool. So that's why I will use this Noctuna. Next we need to install the back plate of the cooler. For that you just turn your motherboard and install it here into this hose. And make sure it also well aligns with the back part of your processor mounting. So here we have these four sticks here. Next we need to place these spacers. Now we install the mounting bars. Attach them. Now we need to apply thermal paste and install the cooler. I have removed the fans, so here we only have the heating element and I also removed the plastic from this part. Now let's align it. And now I just need to tighten it. And it's important to do it from both sides little by little. After the heat element is installed, we need to attach the coolers and it uses these clips. Actually, as you can see, it is quite well aligned with our RAM, so it was not necessary to install RAM first, but it is still good to have it installed first. Now the back cooler. So the cooler is installed. And finally, I connect the cooler to CPU fan headers on the motherboard. Here we have two fans, but Noctuna provides this nice adapter which I'm going to use. And now we can install the motherboard into the case. I have attached these support legs, which are supplied with the case and I also installed this back panel which is supplied with the motherboard. Now let's install the motherboard into the case. Okay, the motherboard is installed. I just need to attach it with this set of screws. Now I connect the fans of the case, you can see it's written here, system fan. And this cable goes to this fan here. This case has a special plate to install 2.5 inches drives, and that's what I'm going to do. I will install 2.5 inches Samsung SSD for 1 terabyte. SSD is attached and can be mounted to the case. Now we need to connect SATA cable to this connector. I will also install 3.5 inches Seagate HDD, which will go here. I just need to take this slot and install the drive here. So I have attached it here with four screws and now I just paste it inside this slot. And it is fixed there. And now we need to attach SATA connector. It's attached. And finally, we need to install the power unit, which is located here. And for this build, I will use Corsair RM750X. I think it is a bit overkill for this system because it's too powerful. 
but the price for this power unit was the same as for 550 watts, so I decided to buy this one to be a future safe, in case I decide to upgrade my system with powerful GPU or maybe more powerful processor. So let's install it. So I have attached all the necessary cables here and I also have installed the plate which comes with the case from here. Now let's place this power unit inside. So the power unit is attached. I have connected all the cables. Here I have different LED lights such as power LED light, reset button, also HDD light. These are two SATA ports we have connected to our drives on the other side of this case. This is USB 3 which goes here to the top of this case. Then this is the fan, we have connected it before, I showed you. So here we have power connection to our motherboard. And there, if you probably cannot see, we have CPU power connector here. This was very difficult to reach and it took me a while to connect it. And this is how the cable management looks from the other side of this case. Now let's try to boot it and install Linux on it. I have brought this computer to my little studio. Now let's see if it will start. Okay, it's making some noise. This is already good, but I don't see any output on the screen. This is bad. Oh, here it is. Nice. Now let's go through the setup of the BIOS. As you can see, it complains that I did not install memory in dual channel, which I tried to do, but probably I did a mistake. So now I will shut down and reinstall the memory. I wrote an image of KDE onto this USB drive and now I will try to boot from it. I will go to simple menu. Maybe we need to restart it. And here we have the menu of KDE Neon. Let's start it. KDE Neon has booted. Here is my new Linux system. You can see all the information about the hardware on the screen right now. You can find even more information in the blog post by following the link in the description. I will elaborate there more about my choice of hardware and my choice of operating system. I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching.